Hello again, I am Blunty, and that right there, at least it should be as soon as something happens on the screen, didn't time that very well, here is a Might and Magic 7. Also, <clears throat> this is Heroes of Might and Magic 7. You can tell because it says so right on the top of the box. So this is the Collector's Edition, which is uh, not out yet, in case you're wondering, in case you're unfamiliar with Heroes of Might and Magic 7. This hasn't launched yet, but... The blokes over at Ubisoft Australia uh, wrote me an email and said, Hey, would you like to exclusively unbox the collector's edition of Heroes and Might and Magic 7 for your people out there in the YouTube's land? And also, we'll give you 200 keys to the beta, which is opening today, by the way. Uh, and we'll find, I'll tell you all about the beta a little bit later in this video. But first, I want to get to the unboxing of this. Actually, you know, first we'll talk a bit about the game. We should talk about the game before we actually unbox the game. Although... That said, because the game isn't out yet, there's no game inside this collector's edition. There will be when you buy yours. It's not going to be like that other game that launched a collector's edition that didn't actually have the game in it, because that was... <sighs> but it will, but it doesn't right now, because the game's not finished, so it can't be in this box, so, you know. But we'll be unboxing everything else in the collector's edition here. This is a mess of a video. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. So, Heroes of Might and Magic... It has been around for a long time now, and as you might be able to see, depending on what gameplay you're actually seeing there on the screen, it's a, uh, it looks like a real-time strategy game, like it looks, you know, down on the field, but it plays uh, as a, as a turn-based strategy game. Uh, at uh, Gamescom, uh, IGN did an interview with one of the guys from Ubisoft, one of the creative directors, I think, or maybe the creative director, I don't know, can't remember his name, uh, should have wrote that down, would have been professional, didn't. Who cares? Um, but he described it as somewhere between like a game of chess and Pokemon, which kind of pricked my ears up a bit. So obviously, Might and Magic Heroes 7 is the seventh one. Uh, the Might and Magic thing has been around since 1986, if you can believe it. And the Heroes umbrella of games has been around since 1995. In 2003, it came under Ubi's stewardship, Ubisoft. And like I said, you can see, you can see it looks like a real-time strategy game. You click around the map and everything, but it's all turn-based. So, um, you know, unlike a, a, a full-on RTS, you're never going to be you're never going to really screw yourself over by panicking and misclicking in the heat of battle. I say that because I do that in pretty much every RTS I've ever tried to play. So the turn-based thing is really good as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> you can think about what you're doing before you do it. Hooray! Now, all the Might and Magic Heroes games take place in one single consistent world and timeline, and Heroes 7 is somewhat confusingly, apparently takes place between Heroes 5 and Heroes 6. So it's 5, 7, 6 in the order of timeline thingy. So I don't know why they did that, but who cares, really? Now, if you're like me and you've never actually dug into this series, which is kind of surprising because, you know, I'm a big dork and I like turn-based strategy stuff, particularly since I discovered Pokemon. <laughs> um, you know, that could feel intimidating, wondering if you get lost by jumping into the middle of an established story or whatnot but you've got to hope the devs are actually smart enough to to make it inviting enough for new players and you'll be able to find out for yourself in the beta if you're a new player like i said i've given away beta keys later in this video you can find out for yourself if it's if it's all too uh, overwhelming story mode or you just don't care and just want to play in battles and warriors and wizards and fighty stuff and, and werewolves and all that kind of stuff i'm not going to talk about it in too much detail because like i said I, I it's not a game i've ever really dug into so if there's any hardcore my magic players out there and i say something stupid or something wrong you know jump in the comments correct me be kind about it but correct me because i'm i'm just going off what i've been what my research has shown me so far that i've done you know after ubisoft said hey would you like to do the thing anyway but you know the good thing about all those years and years of storytelling are the whole thing sits on a, a really solid world building foundation you know an established law it's going to make the world in seven feel complex and rich and complete something kind of important that not every fantasy game actually gets close to right some of them are kind of thin and and uninspired but you know this way around we've got years and years and years of law just sitting underneath the bed of it all thing the whole thing and and but anyway, back to the gameplay. The battle map reminds me a lot of old-school tabletop gaming. I mean, the comparison is easy and obvious to make, isn't it? And with the added bonus of not having to smell the people who usually play tabletop games. And I know that sounds harsh and disparaging, and I'm, I'm making fun of my fellow nerds out there, but the smell of the tabletop gaming den in my local comic book store as I was a, a younger man, it's, it's, it's not something I can ever unsmell. And if you've ever smelled the smell of tabletop gamers, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sorry, guys, but shower more often. Deodorant. Drifting off topic again. 
Back into the battle system, there are cover and flanking systems in play to help make the turn-based battle more complex and interesting than the, you know, the rock, paper, scissors concepts that all this style of turn-based gameplay it sits on top of. And aside from the turn-based battle, the campaign and multiplayer involves moving through the maps, gathering and claiming resources and protecting those resources from enemy factions. Like if you you know you claim a mine, you've got to protect the mine. Uh, you build up your city, you recruit new warriors into your armies to make them bigger and stronger and more intimidating, so they can beat up everybody else and you know generally rule the world. I assume is the end game here. You can even lay siege to enemy citadels. There's even puzzle-solving stuff in the maps. But like I said, I've never actually dug into this game series very much. So if you are a hardcore Might and Magic Heroes player out there, Phil, just go into the comments and tell everybody else what you love about this game series, why it's grabbed you and how long you've been playing for. What was your first one? All that kind of stuff. I'm excited to find out you know, what you guys think about the game too because I will be giving it a go for the first time ever in the beta. But <laughs> I keep teasing the beta keys. Before we do that, we should do the unboxing. So this is an honest to goodness first time I've unboxed this. I've had this sitting on my desk, or actually on my couch, for uh, like a week and a half now. And I've been resisting the urge to, un you know, even take the lid off the thing. Because uh, I wanted to do this live so I could discover it with you guys alongside you. Uh, just pulling up a list of what's supposed to be inside here so I could get the names of everything right. So, um, well, as you can see, as with any good uh, uh, collector's edition there's a there's a statuette in there i was almost going to rant jump into a rant about collector's editions being kind of stupid sometimes these days with you know arm mounted phone holders that are just cheesy and awful i like the collector's edition which have you know statuettes and things in it like you know things you can put on the shelf and go that looks awesome and this is one of those things so oh this is a really nice looking statuette is he you know he's all tied in this Honestly, oh, you could you could just use this as a, as a display case on your shelf for him because we've got the lovely background and everything. That's nice. So let's uh, do the thing where we get the pull the wire off his back. He's his wire you know, cable tied in there. Oh, come on. What's the trouble with doing these things live to camera? All this noise and fiddling about with cable ties. I'm going to step on that ladder, going to you. There was only one. That's that's a plus too. Oh, oh wait. There's an extra head back here too. It's got his helmet on. Let's put that aside. Really, really nice. Really nice actually. The gold looks fantastic. The sculpting on the face and the details and the in the chain mail and, and the cloth and everything. Ooh. I'm gonna have to get into the series just so I have an excuse to sit this thing on my shelf and, and not feel like a poser about it. <laughs> you know, oh, that looks awesome. What's that from? Oh, I don't know, some game that the company sent me to unbox on the YouTube thing. Let's tear his head off it. Oh, he does, it looks kind of funny when you tear his head off, but let's put the helmet one on. Zerp. <laughs> I'm childish. Yeah, that's pretty good too. In fact, I like the normal head better than the helmet, I think. I don't know, what do you guys think? I'll put them both on screen, side by side. Picture with the helmet, picture without the helmet. Which one do you like better? I'm putting the I'm putting the face back on. It humanizes him, I feel. With the helmet on, he's just a faceless warrior. But without the helmet, he's got the scar, he's got character. I, what is his name? I should look at my notes here. Yvan. Y-V-A-N. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Again, if you're a hardcore Might Magic player and I've said his name completely wrong, you're probably going, Ugh, stop it. Um, Yvan? Uvan? I'm going to go with Uven. <laughs> it's probably completely wrong, but Uven, that's Uven. So that looks awesome. That's really nice. Worth it just for that, I reckon. And it's not, you know, it's not cheap and hollow feeling. It's just, it's a substantial figure and there's been effort put into this. I'm, I'm really quite chuffed with the quality of that. Uh, so in the back panel back here, do we, is there any more? Can we open it up? No, everything pulls out the top. All right, so deck of cards here. Where's my, I have to get my little knife so I can pull off the shrink wrap. Zoop. Now this is a, a fully customized Might and Magic Hero 7 tarot card set apparently. And I'm not sure whether it's just a just a gimmicky thing or there's there's an actual game you can play with these. Is there is there an in-law Might and Magic card game that's that's in the other games? Is does the law go that deep or is this just a just a thing? Just a <laughs> Oh wait, they're not tarot cards. The 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 notes say tarot cards, but they're not. Um, let me just do, 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 do. yeah, fully customized tarot game. This is not. I mean, these are these are poker cards. We've got two of diamonds, four of clubs, 
king of uh, spades. Oh, jeez, the art on this is really cool too. <laughs> I'll have to do a close-up on this for you, of course. But these are really cool. I mean, I don't know whether you'd want to actually play with these things. You might just pick out your favourites, stick them in a frame or something, or find some way to display them all cool on the shelf. But, yeah, that's quite nutter. Quite nutter. Quite nutter. The, the word I was searching for there where it was... Getting overexcited again, can't talk. The word I was searching for there was quite nice art. Okay, so we'll put that back in. What else do we got here? Oh, excellent. Uh, there's a envelope here, which is... Ooh, some more cool art. Some couple of little prints here of uh, Might Magic art. These are perfect for framing up as well. Again, I'll put close up so you can see these things properly, but yeah, nice matte printing. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the significance of the of the city or the uh, the people around the war table because I don't know the lore of the game. But you know, if you do, feel free to <laughs> chime in in the comments and tell me. And of course, as with any. Um, Collector's Edition worth its salt. We have a hardcover art book here. So inside here, it can it uh, covers all of the different factions. So if you're into Might and Magic, this this is really going to be quite pleasant for you. And even if you're not into it, I mean, again, the artists behind this game are just doing some really nice stuff. Ooh, that guy with the cloak looks really good. The Counselor. Isn't he? He looks awesome. He looks cool. I'm going to cosplay as that guy. Who could make me a cloak that awesome, though? Let me feel this out now. So what else we got? What's some more stuff? Uh, here is a oh, this is the <laughs> the game case, um, the PC DVD ROM. But of course, as we discussed earlier in the thing earlier in the uh, uh, video, there's no actual game in there. But at least I got the case for it. That's nice. You know, I was I wasn't expecting that at all because you know, I knew the game would be missing. I wasn't expecting the case to be in there at all. Um, oh, here is a Might Magic original soundtrack, and there is actually a disc in this one. Ah, so I can listen to that. I think that's everything. Let me let me double check my list here. Uh, you get the full game, a collector's box to display your figurine and plastic diorama, the figure, the 96 page art book, the two lithographies, that'd be the prints, <laughs> a fully customized tarot game, yeah, we got that, uh, the game soundtrack, and oh, there's in there, there's stuff that isn't in the box that you get when you get the collector's edition as well. I presume they'll be on code cards or something, but there is an exclusive hero, Solmer. Solmir? Solmir. You get Solmir when you buy the collector's edition, apparently. Uh, and you also get an extra scenario map. Pretty standard fare, as far as, you know, the kind of stuff you get. But the quality of the stuff in here is, is really quite impressive. I would be... I would be quite happy if I was a, a Might and Magic hardcore fan and picked up the uh, collector's edition. Especially, I mean, like I said before, it's worth it just for this guy. This guy looks awesome. I mean, he's, he's not, he doesn't quite fit on my shelf next to my computer. Though. Maybe I'll put him down here or something so he appears in every video. I've just realized I've turned away from the microphone while I was mumbling all that. Not very professional, but there you go. So, <laughs> two more things. One is the beta access code, which is on your screen right now. It is first come, first serve. I have 200 beta keys for you guys. Um, so, don't delay. Pop, Type in the link now. I'm not going to put it in the description because I don't want people to cheat. And more well, actually, watch the video and just go to the link in the description. So, you're going to have to type it in manually. Um, the other thing. They're actually letting me give away one of these collector's editions when the game actually launches, so you'll actually get the game on the disc and, and you know, a full and complete experience of your own, including this guy. So what do you have to do to actually win yourself one of these collector's edition thingies? Uh, well, you'll have to be part of the beta, because I want to. I know that's a bit restrictive, but I want to keep this open to only the people most passionate about trying this game out or, or you know, existing players and new players and stuff. So either... You know, the 200 odd people who get beta keys through me, or if you miss out on that, you could probably peck around online and find beta keys somewhere else, I suppose. Um, but yeah, send me a screenshot of your beta gameplay. And to make sure you're not just going to grab any random screenshot off the web somewhere and send it in, I want it to be your screenshot. I want you to arrange the units, your, your battle units on the, on the battle screen or on the overworld or whatever. I want them arranged in the shape of a B for, for Blunty. Um, uh, and, and send that to me via, say, Twitter, uh, with the hashtag that's on your screen now. And we'll keep the competition open till the end of the beta. We'll give you an extra week after that to, to make sure you get your entries in. And then I will pick what I think is the coolest looking B formation battle map screenshot kind of thing. And you'll be selected. And uh, I'll get Ubisoft to send you out a collector's edition. How does that sound to you guys? So, I think I covered everything here. 
the gameplay and the thing and the beta and the key codes and that's it. So if you'll be so kind, do the thing with the buttons to show your appreciation for this video and uh, my efforts to, to give you cool stuff in, in video form, you know, freebies and beta keys. But that's it, I'm done. Thank you for watching. Hope this has been interesting or entertaining or something at least. If you got to this point in the video and haven't clicked away, I suppose you've been entertained by it. I am Blunty. I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.